Taking photos of the moon can actually be quite difficult. Trying to expose for the bright side and the dark side, you just end up with crap photos like this one or definitely like this one. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my technique on how you can expose your stack your photos to get stunning shots like this one or like this one while using Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so before we start this tutorial, what you need to do is go ahead and take two photos. As you can see on the screen here, we've got two photos on our screen already. So we've got the dark side of the moon. So as you can see, if we zoom in, we've exposed for the darker side of the moon. And then in the same time, we've taken a photo of the bright side of the moon. And what we're gonna do is we basically take these two photos and merge them together. And that is the premise of exposure stacking. You're stacking multiple exposures onto the same photo. Now what you can do is two is the minimum. What you can do is hundreds and hundreds of photos. You see those super real, real detail. Here's one that I've taken with a hundred photos and there is way more detail. If we go ahead and zoom into this shot here, you can see there's way more detail. So to keep this tutorial nice and short and not spend hours, which is what I did with this particular photo, two photos is the minimum. Now, what you want to do is go ahead and open up a Photoshop document and basically add these two photos. So in this particular case, we've got the bright side and we've got the dark side. Now, most important thing is lining them up. So we need to make sure the bright side and the dark side are all lined up together and they're overlapping. Now, Photoshop can do this, but for some bizarre reason, Photoshop can't seem to do it with the moon. I don't know why, maybe there's just not enough reference points, but it doesn't do it, doesn't work at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it manually. So the way to do that, go to our bright side layer here, we're going to go to our opacity and we're going to go down to drop it down to 50%. And what we can do is zoom in and you can see the photos are not lined up. So what we're going to do, go to that bright side, we're going to press Command T, that will free transform, and we can drag that into place. And you want to make sure it's lined up to the best of your ability. So we're going to line it up to look like something like so. The better you get it lined up, the better the overall outcome will be. So I'm going to go ahead and press Enter on our keyboard. And what we can do now, go to our opacity and bring that back up again. So what we need to do now is basically blend these two photos together and we're going to be using a layer mask. So make sure we've got that bright layer selected. We're gonna go down to create a new layer mask. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend it using a gradient. So make sure our layer mask is selected. Go over to our gradients tool found on the left-hand side. And then on the top left-hand side, we want to go to our gradient editor. And we want simply black to white. So we've got like so. So that will create a nice evenly and consistent gradient. So we can go ahead and click OK. Making sure black is selected as our foreground color. What we're gonna do is click, drag, and we're gonna try and match these two photos up. So we're gonna go for, it's a bit too much. Let's drop it down. Let's uh, go for, oh, this is difficult, isn't it? Trying to get it matching up perfectly. Okay, so I think we'll go for that look there. So as you can see, we can see at the same time, the dark side of the moon overlaid with the bright side of the moon. Now, forget about the background, completely ignore that. We're gonna create a new background. Now, uh, a quick tip to help you out, what we're gonna do is go down to our adjustment layers icon, icon found in the bottom right-hand corner, and then we're gonna go ahead and just select black and white. And as you can see, I would say that is a decent blend. It could be better, but because we're only working with two photos, that is actually a decent blend there. So what I probably would do is just quickly do a little bit of change, add a little bit more. So add in, okay, so I think that is what I'm going for. Okay, so now the next step is we need to basically cut out the moon and place it on a new background because at the moment in the background, that doesn't look realistic at all. So we're not gonna go for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a cutout of the moon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the left-hand side tools panel, click and drag. And what you wanna do is get the elliptical marquee tool. If you've got the rectangle tool open up, if you click and hold, it'll bring up this sub menu and you want the elliptical marquee tool because obviously, it's circular, the moon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, click, 
drag and we're going to try and make the size of the moon. So what we're going to do is if you hold down uh, shift, you can make a perfect circle. And if you hold down space bar at the same time, you can move that elliptical marquee tool around. So we're going to go and try and incorporate the entire moon by, I would say another tip is just having it on the inside. So we're going to go for a shot like so. So as you can see, that elliptical marquee tool is pretty much covering the entire moon. Now, what we want to do is to add an ever so slight feather. It will add a light, slight blend to it, so it's not going to look too harsh. Again, adding another level of realism to it. So we're going to do, go up to select, drop down to modify, and we're going to go to feather. I'm going to add in just a simple one pixel feather. Lovely. So all we need to do is cut out the entire moon, the bright side and the dark side combined. So what we're going to do, select the dark side, select the bright side, Press Command J to duplicate those layers and then press Command E. That will take those two layers and merge it together. So we've got a brand new layer here called Bright Side Copy. Then what we're going to do is go down and click a layer mask. And what it will do, because we've got a selection already, if we go ahead and turn those two back layers off, we have got the moon and just the moon. So we've got the bright side and the dark side merged together on a brand new layer. So what I recommend doing now is going to the camera raw filter and adding in a little bit more uh, kind of, I guess, contrast to it because at the moment it's quite flat looking. It we need to get that blend needs to look a little bit better. So what I recommend doing is go right clicking on that layer, converting it into a smart object so we allow to change it afterwards. It basically is a history of what we've done within the camera raw filter. Then we want to open up the camera raw filter. So we go to filter. And then we're gonna drop down to camera raw filter. Now in the camera raw filter, if we zoom into the moon, what we want to do is add in a decent amount of contrast. We wanna bring down those highlights slightly. And we wanna bring up the shadows on the moon. Then in, uh, we wanna ignore blacks and whites. We're gonna to go to texture. We're gonna add in a little bit more texture. We add in a decent amount of clarity. We're going to go add in a small amount of dehaze. And then what I recommend doing is adding in a small amount of vibrance as well. Now, another thing you can do is go to your color grading tool. So if we drop out of basic and drop down to color grading, what I recommend doing is adding in blue to the shadows and then orange and green to the highlights. So we go to uh, our shadows, go over to the blues, add in a nice amount of blue there. Then to the highlights, we're gonna go ahead in our complementary color, which is yellow. And we're gonna go add in some yellow to the highlights. Now this will look really nicely when it's done. Okay, so once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And that will bring us back into Photoshop. But obviously nothing looks different because we have still got that black and white layer selected. As you can see, we've got this nice look where it's blue on the dark side and orange on the bright side. And I must say, I think, once it's done, it looks really, really good, especially if you've got multiple exposures and the blending looks awesome. So what we need to do now is work on the background. Now, if we go to our background layer here, I really like the glow that's on the outside of the moon. So we're gonna use a little bit of that in our background copy, but I, what I don't like is the kind of blueness of the sky. We want it to make it look black, so obviously it's, it's, it's a night sky, isn't it? So we want it black. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go head down to our adjustment layers icon, we're going to go all the way up to the top and we're going to go ahead and select solid color. And in our solid color, we are going to select black. So in our black, we're going to take that solid color adjustment layer and drag that all the way to the bottom. What we also want to do is take that black and white adjustment layer and drop that below the moon and turn that back on again. So we're working on a black and white layer. Again, we don't want any color in the background. So once we've done that, what we want to do is go to that dark side of the moon go to our blending mode options, and we're gonna drop that down to screen. And this is completely personal preference, but I'm going to drop it down to around 50%. But depending on how black you want the sky or how much glow you want around the moon, or depending on the opacity. So the more opacity, the more glow, the less opacity, the less glow. I find 50% works about best. So as you can see, it's got a small amount of glow, but not by too much. So we're gonna drop it down to around 50%, and then go ahead and click OK. But if we zoom in, you can see there's a glow on the dark side of the moon and we don't want that. And the best way to do that is to simply increase the moon copy that we've made. So go to the moon here. We're gonna go ahead and press Command T. And what we want to do is basically make that moon slightly larger, but not by too much. So drag it over to the right, 
drag it over to the left, and basically just make sure that there's no glow on the dark side of the moon, because obviously it wouldn't necessarily be there. Okay, so we've got a shot that finishes like this, or let Photoshop do its thing. And as you can see, that is looking quite realistic, but the background is still not looking dark enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our blend if options on our dark side copy. So we've got this layer here, which is our basically adding in that glow and adding in all the stars. So we're gonna double click on that layer. What we're gonna do is open up our layer stylizing box. We'll go to our blend if options, which you can see here. And what we want to do is basically take the this layer and drag that over to the right slightly. Then what you wanna do is press Alt or Option on your computer and break those two icons apart to create a little bit more of a seamless look. So we're gonna go for a look that looks something like this and add a little bit more black in, but we still want that natural glow that you can see. So we'll go for something like so. What we're gonna do is go ahead and click OK. Okay, so we're almost done. What we're gonna do is crop in the photo and then add in a small amount of sun glow just as a little bonus to this photo. So what we need to do now is to actually crop in on the photo. So we're gonna to go to our cropping tool found on the left-hand side tools panel. I'm gonna go for a square look for this case, but you can have it 16 by nine, two by three, anything you want. But because it's a, a, a moon and it's perfectly circular, I think a square look looks quite good. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. We wanna want it to make too close, obviously. And we'll expand that to take up most of the center. And you end up with a shot that looks something, something like this. So go ahead, let Photoshop do its thing. And I say, this is looking pretty good, but there's just one more effect I want to add in, and it's a little sunburst found in the top right-hand corner. So quickest way to do that, go down to the new layer icon found in the bottom right-hand corner, go ahead and create a new layer. Go ahead to the brush tool found on the left-hand side tools panel. Go ahead and select orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a nice bright orange like so. Making sure we've got our brush selected and go ahead and just click once and it will come up with this bright orange splodge. Now what you want to do is go to that layer that we've got here. I'm gonna call it sun. Go to our blending mode options and we're gonna go down to linear dodge add. Now linear dodge add is one of eight special blending modes that will allow you to use fill and opacity and they'll end up with a different look. If you want to know more about this, go ahead and watch this video here. But we're gonna to go to our fill, which changes the projection of this layer. Go to that and we're gonna drop that down like so. Something very subtle, probably around about 35%. Okay, so once we've done that, go ahead and press Command T. And what we want to do is just move that over in the top right hand corner to make it look like it's almost kind of coming glowing over in the top right and it looks like, almost like a sun or something like that. Probably not realistic, but I do like adding it into the photo because it just adds a, a little bit of color which wouldn't necessarily have been there. And as we can see, there we go. This is a composite of a moon using exposure stacking. Now obviously, if you do more or take more photos, the seamless line between it will be greater. So there'll be less of a gradient in between the bright and dark side. And as you can see, this is a, a decent photo. So I'll show you this photo, and then I'll show you the next photo, which was taken using 100 photos. So the more photos you add into exposure stacking, the better the outcome will be. But make sure to write down in the comments below if this tutorial helped you out. Here is the before, and here is the after.